Welcome to the first tutorial that will feature actual programming. Alright, so we're going to start and open a new map in Leadworks. Uh, delete this directional light. Why? Because Leadworks uses a deferred render, which means that uh, the lighting actually impacts the final result, and we don't really want that. Because uh, I want to go over lighting as well in a future video. Um, so for now we're just going to remove all lighting. I create a terrain really quickly and I'm going to change the ambient light all the way up because it's going to be pretty dark. Now you can easily see the terrain. So let's add onto the terrain just so we can make it easily distinguishable is grass. So now we can see the grass. Uh, we're going to add a sphere and we're going to assign it. So we made a sphere, we're going to assign it a concrete texture. Uh, just So this is what we're aiming for at the end of the tutorial without the texture part, which sounds kind of odd, but we have to start kind of small. Um, so we're going to be trying to get a result that looks similar to this. Draw a shader that looks kind of like this, but doesn't even have the texture because we need to get to that stage. So we're gonna make a new shader. Uh, we're gonna make a new material too. So new material. Uh, tutorial one save um, and we're also gonna make a new shader tutorial one save uh, we're gonna open up the material first we're gonna pick the shader anyway okay so it's red which generally indicate like if it looks kinda like this it's probably cuz there's an error uh, the truth is so you can actually edit the shader here but there's nothing in the shader to start off with uh, so what we're also going to do is we're going to assign this material to this object. Notice that it disappears. That's intentional because to start off we have five different shaders you can look at. They're all in this one shader file. Uh, we will use the vertex and fragment for this tutorial. For other tutorials we may use other ones. Always start off your shader like this using the ver OpenGL version number. We're using 4.0 so do 400. And I'm going to copy and paste this to the fragment in just a second. Uh, the other thing is we have this main function. Basically, this is anything inside of here will run, uh, you know, provided you don't exit early or something like that. Um, these, these are basically uniform throughout all of these. Uh, so we're going to actually have to copy and paste this. So copy and then paste into the fragment shader. So now we're basically ready. We have the skeleton set up. Remember when I was talking about the pipeline, I was talking about how vertices, which are basically these points over here, um, these vertices go from being a vertex all the way through a few stages, go to the rasterizer, then go to the fragment shader. We're going to start off with the vertex shader because it's the most important in this tutorial. I'm going to make a few lines um, and we're going to do GL position. This is a built-in variable uh, from open from GLSL you can tell because it has GL underscore position and of course it highlights to blue and we're going to set it equal to something before it goes to the rasterizer it has to be changed uh, the vertex coordinate has to be changed to a screen coordinate okay uh, now notice when I saved stuff changed uh, that's because it compiles when you save here you can also compile by pressing run and if you do you'll get a bunch of you'll get an error message explaining what's wrong how do we get the vertex how do we set this position well I'd like to set it to whatever the actual vertex position is Ledworks provides this uh, there's three types of variables that you can interact with you can interact with in variables out variables and uniform variables Uniforms are kind of like um, global variables. Well, out is output, in is input. Um, so we're going to use in because we're take an input to the shader is uh, a value that Leadworks provides. Vec, yeah, I think it's vec three. So vector three is the type of variable, and this type is a vector of three elements. So vec three uh, vertex position. So we get the position. This is a yeah. So this is a vertex position that we're taking in from Leadworks. We're going to put it out and uh, we're going to, I'm sorry, let's make this a little bigger. Okay, so we're going to set the actual GL position to vertex position. 
uh, semicolon. You have to have a semicolon on every line. It's very similar to C language. All right, and then we're going to save. We get an error that says in line 7 incompatible types. So why is this an error? Because GL position is a vector of four elements. We only provided three. So this is an easy fix. Uh, all we have to do is vector four. But we have to provide one lot more value because this is only three. And that's the last value. Uh, and we get this. This is kind of odd. What is this? So what's happening here is, let me explain this um, a little bit. I'm going to break the shader real quick because uh, just because I don't want that to fill this whole screen. But you see how it sort of was in the middle. Basically what was happening here is if you're familiar with local and global space, local space is basically you have an origin, a custom origin. So this whole world itself has an origin. It's probably around here somewhere. And each model has an origin around here. I'm so, well, it's, okay, so around here. The, these vertex positions are all relative to this model's position, which is where uh, these three rays meet. Okay, so we have that. That's nice. But we have to convert it from this local position to this global position. And then we have to convert that global position to the camera position. So we have to make it... Uh, relative to the camera at the end. But first, let's set it equal to the global position because that's the first step of this. So what do we do? Well, what we basically do is this. Now, there's one other piece of information I have to t talk about. I forgot. In LEDworks, uh, so when the CPU calculates the position and everything of um, a 3D model, it doesn't want to send over every vertex and every position and rotation, right? It if you have multiple models, it just needs to send over the model data once and then the position and rotation of the model as a whole, right? So that's that's pretty useful. I like that. Um, and that, that actually improves performance by quite a bit. However, our vertex shader doesn't know that. So it's basically just using the local position. So these, these vertices, are, they're being treated as like if they were in camera space, uh, first of all. But we need to change it to from local to world space so that we could change from world to camera uh, so let's do the conversion from local to world first uh, this I will I'm writing this piece of code it's called define and you pick a variable name 256 uh, this is called a macro you're defining this variable is equal to 256 well, I think 256 might be a limit in the engine somewhere I uh, I'm not actually sure where that number comes from, but this saves on memory greatly. So let's actually let's compute this. Um, what do we need to get? We need to get the position, rotation, and all that type of data from basically there is this huge array that's passed in that contains all of that for every instance. This is an instance of it of the model, and we need to get this actual instance's data and convert it to world space. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna use a uniform. This is built into LEDworks. Instance matrices equals. Sorry. The syntax is kind of weird. We have mat4. Don't worry if you don't really understand this. I'll explain what this code actually does as a whole. Because explaining each little part's, I don't think, really necessary. Um, Okay, so this code, basically you get all the matrices for this instance. Sorry, for every instance. But we don't need all the matrices for every instance. We just need it for this instance. Well, we're going to do a step in here that will allow us to do that. What am I doing? Every instance will have an instance ID number. It's this GL instance ID. And as you can tell, it's a built-in variable. And we're going to be accessing the specific matrix for this. So let me cu cut that. 
So if you don't end on the semicolon, you can do something like this, actually. It's pretty convenient. What's going on? Well, that would explain something. Okay. Okay. Sorry, I just had a syntax error. So that's what that line actually ends up looking like. Okay, so here we are. We are at position. We're going to multiply this. This is the local position we had. This is the local position right here. We're going to multiply that by the matrix transformation. So it'll turn the local coordinate into a global coordinate. Okay, so we multiplied. And you can do a new line if you want. Um, it doesn't matter. But anyway, I'm just going to keep it here because I have big text and it it doesn't easily go. You can't see the whole line, so I'll just keep it multiple lines. As long as you don't have the semicolon, you should be good, though. Okay, so what do we do here? Well, nothing's displaying. Why is that? Well, we've done the first step. We converted from local. So let me put this uh, comment just to make it clear. World or global we did that step we need to turn it into a camera view so we need to use a camera transformation and there is one it's called projection camera matrix uh, this is two matrices multiplied together the projection matrix and the camera matrix and yeah uh, again this is supplied by the engine the projection matrix converts from a 3D point to a 2D point. The camera matrix is based on the camera. It's transformation. Uh, there are two matrices. You can look them up online. I think they're just multiplied together here. So this is going to be our camera transformation. Okay. So we have all these, transform these transformations. Uh, let me really quick. Okay. Uh, so, in theory, we should be multiplying by the projection matrix. What's going on right here? Let me hide this real quick. And we, we don't need to be in this view anymore. So we can turn into single viewport. Basically, it's hidden, right? I, I don't know where the pixels are. It looks like a wireframe again. Oh, what's with that? Um, so it looks all stretched. At least it's in world space right now, and it's in camera space as well. So that's nice, but why is it stretched like that? Alright, so let's go back to our shader. So this matrix uh, contains the position, rotation, and scale of this, ob of this instance. However, it also contains the color, and it puts that in the fourth column. So we're going to have to edit that. Uh, and remove the color. So how do we do this? Well, let me copy and paste this code because we're going to have to make a new matrix. So matrix 4. We're going to call it mat just to keep it for short for matrix. Uh, we're going to copy, copy, paste it here. Okay. Um, let me extend this so you can see all the code better. Alright, so we have to change some of that. Um, so we're going to do Okay. Okay, because that's where all the colors are stored. So we're going to have to set all the colors to 0, 0, 0, and 1. Uh, the reason why this is important because the colors were being factored in when we were changing from when we were changing from local coordinates to world coordinates, we were actually taking into a, we were treating the color as part of that transformation matrix, which means the color factored in to the end result. So we're going to save this, um, and this should you know we replaced it. Uh, remember what I said about adding ones. Um, for matrices, the uh, because it, this is homogeneous, we're dealing with homogeneous coordinates. We need the last this three three. So this is on the diagonal to be zero, or sorry one. Yeah. Um, uh, now we can take a look at the result. It looks correct, 
right? I mean, it doesn't have any color or anything. And we're going to slightly change that. We're going to go to, uh, so we're done with the vertex shader. Uh, pretty, a lot of work, but we're not going to really touch this too much in the future, uh, which is kind of nice. That's pretty much all the work. Uh, I mean, there are things you can do in the vertex shader that we'll touch on that will change it. Um, so the fragment shader has an output uh, called frag0. Um, I forgot to put the type. It's a vec4. This is the fragment color. Okay, so we're going to have to assign this value to vec4. What do we want to do? Probably 111. Let's just do all ones. Right? Uh, since colors are from 0 to 1, this should be a white sphere. And it is. Okay, so that's all for today. Um, let me know what you think. But if you have anything specific you want me to cover, just uh, post a comment and I'll see what I can do.